Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the virtual lobby of Tucker Hall, where we've all spent so many happy hours, or most of us anyway. So greetings and congratulations to the class of 2020. As my colleagues say, we have missed being with you this spring. My name is Suzanne Raitt. I'm the chair of the Department of English Language and Literature. And I want to start our virtual ceremony today by acknowledging those among us who have lost loved ones to COVID-19 or who are sick right now or who have loved ones who are sick. We send you our deepest sympathy and our hopes for a quick and speedy recovery. Now onto the business of the day, the joyful business of the day. We join you all in this virtual room to celebrate the wonderful achievements of the class of 2020, especially striking this year as our graduates completed their degrees in an atmosphere of turbulence and distress that even two months ago, none of us could have imagined. We wish more than anything that we were all together right now in a big white tent in the sunken garden. But that day will come. Right now, we want to celebrate with our graduates on the weekend when you have finally completed your time with us in the best way that we know, by thinking of you, congratulating you, and wishing you well. This virtual ceremony will have four parts. First, I will speak, but don't worry, only briefly. Then we will watch our graduating majors walk up onto our virtual screen stage. Then the faculty will congratulate you as a group. And finally, a number of our faculty will open individual breakout rooms for you and your family to meet with them live. All our graduates have received an email with the links in them, and I hope you have that ready so that you can visit the people that you want to talk to. Our breakout rooms will remain open for at least half an hour after the first part of the virtual ceremony is concluded. And please feel free to drop in and out of as many Zoom rooms as you please. And if you don't make it to a Zoom room that you especially wanted to go to, then please feel free to email your faculty member afterwards. And I'm sure that they can arrange a time to meet your family, chat with you, and congratulate you once more. I should note that this is in no way a substitute for our in-person ceremony. We know that graduation is one of those landmark moments in everybody's life where we need to come together in person to hug, to shake hands, to laugh, to drink and eat together. We hope very, very much to do that with you in October and we hope that somehow you will all find your way back to the campus that has welcomed you from the beginning. This virtual ceremony is a way for us to come together on this particular momentous weekend in your lives to celebrate with you at the moment of the completion of your degrees, to share in your joy, and also to share in your sense of loss. We always feel gratitude at commencement, and this year even more so. First, to your families and friends, who we hope are watching with you now. Families and friends, many of you have been in closer proximity to the, your children over the past few weeks than you expected, and perhaps even than at times you wanted to be as your children navigated their final weeks of university. We know you've all supported each other, whether you're all together in your family homes or communicating virtually via Zoom and FaceTime. We know that some of our graduates have concluded their time at William and Mary in off-campus apartments, sustaining themselves with their roommates, with virtual visits with friends and with connecting to their faculty and to their advisors. The children, the adult children that your children now are, have needed you in ways that they never imagined they would, at least not at this age. But at times they've also found themselves frustrated by that need and distracted by thoughts and memories of the campus lives that they've lost. There has been the joy of unexpected reunion and a new kind of intense togetherness. But we've also had to call on our patience, courage, and sense of humor to get past the last few weeks. 
Our graduates left for spring break thinking they would come back a week later. Instead, their lives as they knew them were brutally interrupted. Some of them faced the last half of the semester without the clothes, books and papers they needed. They had to work without access to libraries or to dedicated workspaces. They were scared, disoriented, and often struggled to find the motivation and the literal bandwidth to do their schoolwork. But they adapted. It wasn't easy. They had to draw on all the reserves they have of hopefulness, self-belief, and courage. Most of them had to grow to meet the challenge. We all had to grow to meet this challenge. They did it. And the thing that has got me through these past few weeks has been the sight of their bright, beautiful faces in that Zoom grid that has now started to feel like a cage from which we all want to escape. I also want to thank the faculty who have helped our graduates reach this very special moment in their lives. Transitioning at the speed of light to teaching remotely, devoting themselves to their students' changed needs, and finding joy and creativity, even in these sad and difficult circumstances. And thank you from the bottom of my heart to our office staff, Jean Smith and Shanae Butler, without whom there would be no English department, there would be no students, and there would certainly be no graduation ceremony. Shanae and Associate Chair Arthur Knight, pictured here with this dog, worked especially hard on this virtual ceremony. And I am so grateful to them for their effort and their ideas. Arthur generously provided a playlist of the music you're about to hear. Now it's time to see our graduating majors and minors in English and to acknowledge the multiple recipients of honors, prizes and scholarships. The prizes, scholarships and PBK, PBK membership are listed on the appropriate slides. We also invited our graduates to provide photographs of themselves and a quote or a comment that they felt summed up their feelings about their time studying English at William and Mary. Not all of our graduates responded to that invitation and we celebrate everybody, each and every one of them, whether or not there's a photograph on their slide. At the time of recording, not all honours examinations have been completed, so we will have to wait to acknowledge the recipients of honours until we meet again. But many, many congratulations to those of you who have already completed your defences and gained honours, and the very best of luck to those of you who have not yet completed your defences. I also want to acknowledge the graduates in the joint degree programme with St Andrews University in Scotland. Over the years, you've travelled a long, long way multiple times, and your parents have given you the freedom and the independence to do that. Congratulations, class of 2020, and here you are. The suspense is killing you, I know. Here we go. Joseph Kellogg Allen. Catherine Mary Anderson. I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Quinn, Monica, unknown. Good friends, good books and a sleepy conscience. This is the ideal life. Maggie Elaine Ashmeyer. Words are, in my not so humble opinion, a most inexhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury, injury and remedying it. Catherine Elizabeth Beiser. Pause you who read this and think for a moment of the long chain of iron or gold, of thorns or flowers that never would have bound you but for the formation of the first link on one 
memorable day. Samantha Renee Huateng. Life's too short to settle at 21. Keep pressing ahead. Devon Elizabeth Bortz. I still can't believe we got to sit around and talk about books and get graded. Elish Claire Bova. It's the questions we can't answer that teach us the most. They teach us how to think. If you give a man an answer, all he gains is a little fact. But give him a question, and he'll look for his own answers. Bianca Navarro Bowman. If you only read the books that everyone else is reading, and only think what everyone else is thinking. Susan Brady. Cameron Michael Bray. It's already happened. It's already great. Catherine Maureen Brownfield. In the end, we'll all become stories. Julia Bullard. You can never get a cup of tea large enough or a book long enough to suit me. Joel Stewart Calfee. I believe that the truth of any subject only comes when all sides of the story are put together. Aida Esmeralda Campos. The world is full of painful stories. Sometimes it seems as though there aren't any other kind. And yet I found myself thinking how beautiful that glint of water was through the trees. Catherine Susan Karras. Benjamin Christensen. Nothing will come of nothing. Maxwell Mason Plo. Isabel Grace Cullinane. <clears throat> Catherine Lee Dawkins. Rebecca Catherine DeVore. Catherine Donati. What is this terror? What is this ecstasy, he thought to himself? What is it that fills me with extraordinary excitement? It is Clarissa, he said. And there she was. Sarah Virginia Elam. The person, be it gentleman or lady, who has not pleasure in a good novel, must be intolerably stupid. Kaylin Grace Eleuterio. <clears throat> Study hard what interests you the most, in the most undisciplined, irreverent, and original manner possible. Zachary Allen Ellis. Danielle Kathleen Green. A 
reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one. Ethan Maxwell Grove. Brooke Elizabeth Guidash. We lose ourselves in books. We find ourselves there too. Diana Lee Hamer. Oh dear me, the mystery of life. Hunter Roos Hall. You'd better get busy though, buddy. The sand runs out on you every time you turn around. I know what I'm talking about. You're lucky if you get time to sneeze in this phenomenal world. Jiwu Han. Catherine Robbie Hansen. We made it through. Zachary Michael Hassan. Aaron Carter Higgins. Like distant music, these words that he had written years before were born towards him from the past. Alexander Miller Hubbard. Nora Monroe Hunt. You are not the work you do, you are the person you are. Kathy Kekian Jiang. Ink runs from the corner of my mouth. There is no happiness like mine. I romp with joy in the bookish dark. Mary Elizabeth Casputis. Calvin Richard Colby. Books are not made to be believed, but to be subjected to inquiry. When we consider a book, we mustn't ask ourselves what it says, but what it means. Karis Lee. Shannon Mary Lewis. Charlotte Elizabeth Madsen. Evelyn Marie Maslum. It's good to do a good thing but it's better to do a good thing in a good way. Christina Marie McBride. He. Well. She. Well. He. Well, here we are. She. Here we are, aren't we? Kate O'Connell. McGeehan. What if we could figure that out? So it's not girl gets boy, it's girl gets book. Samuel Michael McIntyre. It all means more than I can tell you, so you must not judge what I know by what I find words for. 
Brooke, Anne Miller. Edward Joseph Millman. The struggle itself toward the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. Helen Monroe. She'd become an English major for the purest and dullest of reasons, because she loved to read. Gabriela Alexandra Montes de Oca Rivera. There will be little rubs and disappointments everywhere, and we are all apt to expect too much. But then, if one scheme of happiness fails, human nature turns to another. The first calculation is wrong, we make a second better. We find comfort somewhere. Margareta, Ivoy, more. You think your pain and your heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. It was books that taught me that the things that tormented me most were the very things that connected me with all the people who were alive, who had ever been alive. Joseph William Moriarty. Colin Patrick Murphy. With her foot on the threshold, she waited a moment longer in a scene which was vanishing even as she looked. And then, as she moved and took Minta's arm and left the room, it changed, it shaped itself differently. It had become, she knew, giving one last look at it over her shoulder, already the past. Near Langley, Naples. We aren't here to make things perfect. The snowflakes are perfect. The stars are perfect. We are here to ruin ourselves and to break our hearts and love all the wrong people and die. Evelyn Grace Mims. To read is to be reminded that we are never done learning. Grant Hunter Nuttall. All is, if I have the grace to use it so, as ever in my great taskmaster's eye. Nicholas Elias Oviedo Torres. The paradox of education is precisely this. But as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated. Rebecca Alicia Polish. I can't imagine a man really enjoying a book and reading it only once. Cameron, Jean, Poland. But for my own part, the book is well written. I always find it too short. Clara, Grace, Petit. Kindred spirits are not so scarce as I used to think. It's splendid to find out there are so many of them in the world. Austin Rackett. Elizabeth Grace Radcliffe. When they asked me what I wanted to be, I said I didn't know. 
Oh, sure, you know, the photographer said. She once said J.C. Whitterly to be everything. I wanted to crawl in between those black lines of print, the way you crawl through a fence and go to sleep under that beautiful big green fig tree. Daniel Alberto Rosa. Yasmin Isabella Samari. I cannot remember the books I've read any more than the meals I have eaten. Even so, they have made me. Sophia Margaret Sternberger Sheely. Alyssa Renee Scavarla. Wasn't friendship its own miracle? The finding of another person who made the entire lonely world seem somehow less lonely? Corinne Rose Southern. Jenna Spilly. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around it. Jonah Glenn Sweeney. Kate Alyssa Taylor. Leonor Galliana Taylor Grave. It is human nature to stand in the middle of a thing, but you cannot stand in the middle of this. Noah Joseph Terrell. Jessica. Gabriella Ergo. If we are not willing to fail, we will never accomplish anything. All creative acts involve the risk of failure. Elizabeth Garrett Banas. I've dreamt in my life dreams that have stayed with me ever after and changed my ideas. They've gone through and through me, like wine through water, and altered the colour of my mind. Helena M. Vaughan. Kelsey Jordan Vita. You can't stay in your corner of the forest waiting for others to come to you. You have to go to them sometimes. Angela Rose Granados West. I like good strong words that mean something. Sarah Grace Wilkowski. Sarah Williams. Michael Henry Williamson. Catherine Willoughby. Without your past, you could never have arrived. So wondrously and brutally, by design or some violent, exquisite happenstance, here. 
Joshua William Singer. And that concludes the list of graduating seniors today. But we have a couple more things to say to you. Congratulations, class of 2020. We loved spending time with you. We hope to see you in October. Please keep in touch. So thank you all for everything that you've done over these four years that you've spent with us. We have so much enjoyed our time with you. You've brought us hope in dark moments. You've brought us energy when we were tired. You've brought us brilliance when we felt that our brains were turning to mush. And most importantly, in these last few weeks of the semester, you have stood with us every step of the way and you have turned what might have been an unhappy, discouraging experience into one that proved to us once again that we are the luckiest people in the world to teach in the English department at William and Mary. We wish you every luck, we wish you good health, we wish you safety, we, we wish you the fulfillment of all your dreams as you go out into this uncomfortable, uncertain and beautiful world. And we congratulate you all. Class of 2020. <laughs> and that concludes our virtual ceremony.